So, I am willing to go on streams, videos, etc. with people willing to have me. Most people aren't. You can say that's justified or not if you want. But ultimately, I feel like there's a certain sort of respect required in these scenarios. Um, if you're telling somebody to come on your show, you're saying take the time that you could be using to do something else to do this instead. Now, when that's the agreement, you're clearly saying either one of two things. You're either saying that you know the person and you know why their time would be valuable. And this is like good faith, right? Assuming you're not a piece of shit. You know the person and you know why their time would be valuable. And that's why you're inviting them on your program. And you should let them speak and give them the majority of the time in order to fully flesh out whatever point they make on their own time that you don't make yourself. Because otherwise, why have them on at all? You can make that point, right? You can do this on your own, so why do you need anybody else? Why would you want anybody to make a point that you can make better yourself? Unless it's just for name recognition and clout chasing, or getting the numbers from their audience in your audience. Unless it's some, you know, really cynical motive, which I find it is a lot of the time. That's the good faith version of option one. The second option is that you don't know them. You don't know them, and you should let them say what they need to say. Because you invited them onto your show so that you could have a discourse with somebody you didn't know. I find a lot of internet streaming culture to be rather toxic because a lot of people aren't willing to acknowledge those two premises. And as a result, they will interrupt people, they will challenge people to debates, which are anything but, that are like, basically just shouting matches with many fallacies until one of the people gives up and stomps off. Um, or till one of them just gets stomped into the ground and owned epic style. This isn't debates. There's nothing intellectual or academic about that sort of culture. And I've rejected them being called debates for a long time now because they're not. All they are is a public spat recorded on video. The fact that two people disagreed with each other and put it on record does not mean that a debate occurred. A debate involves more intellectual rigor. It involves trying to give your opponent space. It involves, you know, stepping back for a moment and being respectful. But most of these online debates aren't. They don't care, <laughs> you know. I just thought I'd preface this with that sort of explanation as to why I'm standoffish when I do get invited on streams. Because I assume that people are going to be part of this, like, modern culture online. This modern culture where, you know, it's more about looking and feeling good than it is about being sound. Um, and even when it's not a debate, that spills over, and people act like they're in one of these debates, um, and they don't treat it at all like a normal debate, like an actual debate, where there's moderation, there's timing, there's, like, respect for logic, some sort of, you know, understanding that there should be no fallacies, and that people should try to limit the amount of like, logically disprovable things they say, while also appealing as much to the audience as possible. Debate is both an art and a science. But this rubs off 
on other cultures online. And a great example of that having happened recently was when I went on a stream to talk about libertarian unity. And by that I mean the bottom strip of the political compass. I mean the people who want 0% government, who want zero state, not people who want a little bit, you know, not minarchists, etc., but like ANCOMs, you know, the dreaded ANCAP, uh, fucking agorists, mutualists, syndicalists, egoists, you know, I could keep on listing ists, individualists, transhumanists, primitivists, Everybody has something against the system that can be used. And all they have to do is form enough of a bridge to take actions on specific issues and coalitions can be built. Um, and then those coalitions can be broken up should people desire. But when I got on this stream, um, the... The prime disagreement seemed to stem from the person's experience having been affiliated with libertarian organizations, and I say libertarian in severe quotes, because many of these organizations are anything but. As those of you who have been following me for some time know, I got some shit against many libertarian organizations. So... Uh, imagine my shock when bringing up their funding sources didn't get taken well. Now, maybe I wouldn't have made this video. Maybe I would have, you know, let it slide that I was kicked off of this stream for explaining my position um, loudly while I was being talked over trying to explain my position or while my position was being dismissed without any proof. Um, but to be specific, I got kicked off and I started to write a thread about my experiences having been kicked off. And my thread is as follows, that I brought up the conservative funding of libertarian organizations, that Samuel Edward Konkin III brought this up in the New Libertarian Manifesto, that Rothbard got kicked out of the Cato Institute because of that, and that Rothbard's assessment of their influence was correct, and also my own personal experience, because as those of you who've been following my content for a while know, I tried to run a YAL chapter. I tried to uh, start one, and it didn't work, partly because I had a lot of anarchist views that didn't really comport well with the conservative material they gave me. So while these people would be arguing for limited government and legalization of weed exclusively, and we're not so extreme, we're not anarchists, and having a big old Nolan chart bullshit political compass tilted on an axis uh, in order to say that, you know, statism is here and Ron Paul is here, uh, <laughs> you know, it didn't go well. Because I don't believe that material. I believe that there's more anarchist positions than Ron Paul. But just to be clear, I tried. And so I know what's on the material. I know what these conservatives have been funding. And anybody who's been following me knows that I know. I know my shit in this regard. So I started to talk about that. And was regularly and routinely interrupted and eventually kicked because I don't want shouting on my stream. I got loud and got censored. He accused me of being bad at coalition building because I harshed his weed high, which by the way, holy shit, he got blazed on that stream. You can just see him lighting up over and over. Maybe that might have had an impact on his ability to handle discourse. Who knows? I certainly wouldn't make that claim. And demanded I bring up examples of things these libertarian orgs do and believe. He then falsely accused me of strawmanning, interrupted, and censored me. All of those things happened. Um, and the general vibe I wanted to give off 
was if you're going to try to talk over me, if you're going to disrespect my position, if you're going to be this way, I'm going to yell as well. I'm going to be as confrontational as you are. So the full stream will be linked in the comments, assuming it stays up, because another stream I was involved in recently got full ass taken down by the person who, um, who, who, who ran the stream because he decided that the fact that we were covering the potential, not, not that we said it happened, but the potential for uh, election fraud was enough to get his channel censored. Well, you knew who you were inviting on, and both Harrison and I uh, believe that. Um, so having us on, having people on, should come with the responsibility to understand what they're saying. And if you don't want to cover something, make that clear prior to. And, you know, my condition for even showing up on this next stream was that, you know that be reinstated so that's allegedly back up now i don't know i haven't asked for a link but what i can tell you is that um ultimately uh i was pretty irritated to begin with that and i had just gotten off of basically 10 miles of running because it's snowing and you know why not why not go for a mostly cross-country run through the snow i i think it's a very valuable expenditure of time yeah because I like to try and stay fit and because it felt good and was fun and because I spend too much time in front of a computer and occasionally it's nice to get out of my rural or urban cage in this case because I no longer live in the desert but basically yeah all of this is designed to preface what you're about to see because he liked this next tweet this response here and I think it's valuable to show you guys what really went down. I was also interrupting, though. I was insulting, rude, and screaming at the top of my lungs before he finally booted me. Simply declaring that I'm an asshole beforehand doesn't give me immunity to then completely fulfill that for the next 30 minutes. <laughs> really now? It doesn't? Okay, so I'll be making a video about this as well. Um, but you don't invite somebody on who is a certain way and then get surprised when that's the way they are. Alex Jones being invited onto a thing in order to, you know, yell, um, shouldn't be a surprise. If he starts yelling, he's Alex fucking Jones. Um, when Tim Pool had Kanye West on, wow, he started to spew some anti-semitic shit who'd have, who'd have guessed that would happen because tim pool is a fraud and i'll be going over that soon i'll be giving my full on full-on take about that and you'll notice that in this particular recording they really would rather have discussed that than libertarian unity but to be completely clear and specific i was re-invited on and there's a lot of follow-up afterward that really goes to show that if they had given me the full time to express what I was saying, it would have made a lot more sense and been a lot less dismissible. But that would have been too hard, you know, to confront. So they didn't do that. Um, <laughs> they wanted me, at least the guy who actually kicked me off. I'm pretty sure that, uh, that, that Kareem wanted me on because he was the one who convinced uh, the host to let me back on. And so if you all want to go check out the rest of the video, it will be there. But this is just the chunk where I got removed from the stream. Because I think you guys will find it funny. And I think it's a good way to sort of inform how it is to invite somebody on you're not prepared for and don't fully respect or respect at all. Because, let's be super clear here, I lay it all out there. I'm extremely transparent about how I am. And, yeah, it kind of gives me a license to do that. It's like saying, oh, yeah, shit, I invited fucking, man, I invited Slipknot on my stage and they just started screaming. I wonder why. I expected them to sing mellow like the Carpenters. <laughs> Which, by the way, 
not knocking the carpenters. I still have my carpenters music on my PC. I I I I I have varied tastes. But the general vibe is that yeah, you had me on. This is who I am. So, um I got loud and when I was treated better, this is generally true too, by the way. When I am treated better, generally I don't get that loud. There are so many s streams that I've been allowed on, invited on, where I don't get loud. I wonder why. So, it's almost like, um, if you want me to not be an asshole, it would behoove you to not be that way to me. Not dismiss my experiences, not dismiss what I say, etc. And I want this to be on the official record, even if the full video gets taken down. So that's my goal here. Um, this this rant at the beginning was just to preface it and to give enough padding that this is original content and that YouTube won't censor me because I know how to stay on YouTube. So with all that being said, uh, time to hit this bitch and uh, press play. Smash the fucking state. So basically what happened is me and Leighton were chilling. Um, we were talking about the yay thing and we were talking about we talk about cultural issues here more so than geopolitical. That's why I like it. And then we talked about Balenciaga and then somehow we got into I started talking about ANCAPs and ANCOMs working together. <laughs> Eli was in the Twitch chat and I played that Brett Weinstein clip where it says, hey, um, we have the fundamentals of decentralization both. Or he said liberty. And I said, why not? cooperate you said you had a lot to say about that jeremy's very good at articulating that if, if and you can remember late and i used to be like pro nick fuentes i'm glad i got off that train talk to jeremy about it i'm like you know what i, I didn't look at any ink um, stuff i didn't look at bakunin or any of that 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 thing so i do think it's fully possible for us to cooperate and, and go fully decentralized and, and work in that fashion that being said though I, you guys had thoughts, and I was actually really interested to hear your perspective. Um, so I guess, I guess, um, I guess what I'll say is this. So my my position last night was basically this. I I see all of the anarchist philosophies within the liberty movement, um, regardless of political action or not. Like I don't really care about that. I think agorists do a ton of great work. I, I see a lot of people, especially within the ANCAP community, who seem to like to bash those people, which I seem, I think that's stupid, just in general. Um, but the the um, position that I took last night was that I think ANCAPs and ANCOM specifically have a harder time working together than any other group. And I don't think that when you play them out to their end, they can be as cohesive as people think. Why do you have rest... a hard time working with ANCOMs? So my position, like, I, I've worked with, like, and I've talked privately and have a ton of followers and friends who are, like, uh, not even ANCOM, but even uh, more communist than that, like, off the anarchist spectrum entirely. But Well, that's the, not more communist. Generally, when you get tankies, they're right, more yeah, yeah, capitalist you're right. than communist anyway. Yeah, you're, you're not wrong. Um, but uh, the, the position more of was, to me, was from the onset. So I look at, like social media posts forums things like that where i look at people who are just arguing back and forth communicating back and forth at the, so end the, of the internet day, like yeah in, in general uh but no not just the internet because like i've been to a ton of like liberty events and you do meet like especially in the younger like classes of people i meet a lot of like you know college age people who are coming out uh even if they are on the conservative line, like people who are Republican that are coming over more towards the anarchist spectrum later on, or people who are far on the left who are coming over to that kind of spectrum later on. Um, I've noticed in conversation, those people just harbor ideas that I don't think mesh well with the end position of anarchism or the end position of ANCAP ideals or any of the other kind of subgroups like for when instance, you say liberty event what do you mean oh i've been to like a lot of uh, just conventions and stuff like that like you mean young americans for liberty things funded by conservatives yeah i've been to yale i've been to like a ton of the like uh 
libertarian conventions. I've been to a few libertarian like, party, which was also funded by Coke. Yeah, we can get into that debate. I don't. I don't think Coke money has much to play with in the LP. Why not? Konkin did. You just praised agorists. Why don't you praise Konkin's work in debunking the lie that the LP wasn't affiliated with, with the Koch brothers and the general uh, base? So something being affiliated with something within the past, does that mean it's affiliated within it now? Yes, because the Atlas Foundation, the uh, Reason Foundation, Cato Institute, many other their alleged right libertarian boilerplate organizations are directly funded by the Koch brothers. Hell, the Cato Institute started out as the Koch Institute. And uh, right. when yeah. when Rothbard was kicked out, it was because he started to criticize um, what the Koch brothers were doing with the joint and their money in general and the party in general. And he eventually had to write a piece asking whether or not Konkin was right. So was Rothbard wrong? Was Konkin wrong? Well, I don't. I, the the fact of the reality is, we're living in an era right now where you have multiple sects of libertarianism and multiple sects of anarchism. Like that's the reality. So you can talk about past theory and what roles they play. No, it's current. But the reality is, you have funders now of the LP, and you can argue mm -hmm. that people who fund the LP were funded by the Koch brothers or are funded by mm -hmm. the Koch brothers. And, they and I will say there are. Lots of private funders to lots of groups. You can't, and how many you can't base the entire. Again, I don't. I don't see how that plays into what we're discussing. Okay, so like, let me let me ask you: If I tell you who to a Republican or a Democrat, does that to your impression of them? If I told you that they were donated, their actions to, matter. If I told you that they were donated to by the same military industrialists, the same intelligence industrialists, the same uh, police office uh, offices, if I, if I told you that they were funded by the same people who fund every bit of evil that you claim to oppose, um, why would that not change your opinion? Funding doesn't mean anything. Actions Yes, do. it fucking if, does. If, if a group is... Well, if a, well then... then Okay, in reality, what you're saying means nothing. If if funding people you. means as much fuck as you, if you. funding, holy shit, Rothbard was not funding, wrong. If funding people in the way that you're talking about means as much as you believe it does, then I don't it's understand right. what you're attempting to say. So if I take five dollars from a statist who has a benefit Ooh, for me to vote, definitely analogous. Okay, if yeah. I take five dollars. If I take five dollars, if I'm broke and I take five dollars from somebody who has a, is a statist broke, and they have a benefit for, for me, you're you're not paying attention to what I'm saying. You're, I'm saying if I'm somebody who's broke and I'm completely without money, I need monetary yeah. value, and somebody walks up to me and offers five dollars to go vote for the candidate that's going to give them the things that they want, or to advertise that that candidate is better to give them the things that they want right if like, you can be if that happens and they the give setting. them five thousand dollars five million dollars five hundred thousand dollars whatever money you want to pick they give okay. that money to me right the bigger the and then i money, don't the and then i don't vote for the candidate that they wanted me to vote for <laughs> did that bribe influence my vote no, uh, here, here, I'll take a middle ground between both of you and say funding matters, actions do matter, but funding can, like, okay, I'll give you an example. Deep state funding non can influence decisions, yes. but it doesn't Not have to. And unless it, you it can does, show me visibly where did. that is affecting it. Can I try something? Which is what I asked. So, so Kareem gets interrupted and he can't, like, finish what he was saying, right? So I would take a look at, I think what, what they're, what, uh, I'm sorry. I know your username is Insanity. What was your first name again? Jeremiah. Okay, so I think what Jeremiah is sort of trying to point out here is that uh, essentially when you donate to a political campaign, you're exchanging uh, monetary capital for social capital. And so it has an informing effect on what the likely decision making of that candidate is going to look right. like. Um, and what it necessarily always does, mean, basically. Wait, but it does that through actions that those politicians or those candidates <laughs> or those people take, not Woo! through the, not through the donation. Like well, I don't, I don't get what we're. You're much more well, interesting. 
I'll give a practical example. Like when when there was a there was a streamer I I, I do like who is a conservative who, who anomaly, and one day Kyle Matovic from the Mises Caucus posted that well oh, not anomalies really criticizing deep state dawn. I said oh okay let me see what he has to say and then I saw him on Clint. One of the biggest things he pointed out that I didn't even know is that Pfizer gave the previous president mm -hmm. and the current president millions of dollars. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not going to say Deep State Dawn was was somehow magically anti-establishment before he jumped in, but he seemed to be a vax or he seemed to be a um, procedure skeptic. He seemed to be skeptical of Big Pharma and Robert F. Kennedy and things like that. <laughs> no. Okay, fine. But let's just say this. He changed his tune over time. Um, I don't know. I mean, unfortunately, the reality is if you give someone $10 million or $100 or or whatever, it may change their thinking. It may not. Ron Paul was able to resist that. That's why we're all fans of Ron Paul here. That's why, you know, we all some of you guys campaign for and him. who was he funded by um i don't i don't know yeah um, it's almost like the the big money donors that fund these other people put them on a platform to say and do things and then that's what they say and do and that's why but, we don't but, hear about ron paul's funding because if uh, if all these other people had to wear their funders on their jacket it would look like nascar and ron paul might have like a few pins I don't disagree with you there. That's not where I'm disagreeing with you. My, my disagreement is simply in the, the way that you framed money going from somebody and that influencing their decision. Yeah, it, that, that fucking does. That, that is an option. Like, it there is. are people who get funded. For instance, happens. if I run an organization that's getting millions of dollars from hundreds of people that have different <laughs> philosophies or opinions... Then you're in a bit of a tricky situation because you have to say that one of those people's opinions outvalue the others it from a non-monetary basis. Monetary but then funding does matter. Well, influence the fucking policies. That's well, what open secret I, proves. That's what I was going to try to reconcile this with. Is and that, I hope you do because you are much more interesting. Um, oh, like, come donor by donor informs something but of course there's a lot of different donors so they're, they're getting pulled in a lot of directions so so i don't think you can look at just one donor but but they does oh, say would. something each each donor does say something about them and that's the thing the reason i brought that up is because when he said liberty events i know exactly what that is i used to be uh trying to like start a young americans for liberty chapter and um when i went to these events uh, I got conservatism all the time, bombarded with it. And the first time uh, that, that like, a leftist speaker got on, a hush fell over the crowd. He was from the Center for a Stateless Society, which used to work with Konkin and Rothbard. Um, and this is a well-respected institution on a normal basis. But in this conservative-funded organization where they were hearing that the left is bad all day, this guy got on stage and a hush fell over the crowd, and they were like not having it. They were not receptive. And he was giving really, really salient points. So it started to sort of jar my thinking. This was like over half a decade ago. Um, you know, I've been in this for a very fucking long time, and I've been able to watch all these things sort of slowly happen. And um, when I started to look into these things, look into the fact that the Koch brothers at the same time as you know, being the, the Cato Institute, small governmentarians uh, were like supporting the uh, the Chicago boys plan to uh, install Pinochet. When I found out about the fact that the Koch brothers are heavily involved in big oil and big tobacco and regularly lobby for every single politician who's going to make things easier on those industries. When I found out that these institutions were directly responsible for the bulk of alleged liberty conferences and organizations, it started to fucking click. And the reason you might not have seen such a good reception from communists there, and the reason there might have been static, is because it was lopsided and not coalition-minded. They weren't interested in working with communists, and any leftist who came into that space coming into opposition territory funded by the fucking right. 
So maybe that's why it matters who fucking well, I, I, it. You're 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 missing you're missing entirely the point that I made, and I'd question your ability to coalition build with the way that you speak to other people. And I care. Oh yourself. yeah, other people. You, not you just have you, not just you who well, regularly no, there's... interrupted Kareem. I mean, no, he, he's my he, he's my co-host. So here's the thing: like I do, I, I, really I have do. 38 shows with Kareem on it. <laughs> like I, you, you can. So you can be rude to him now. He's not. He's not being. Rude. I'm. I'm not offended. Here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. Actually, in, in the fact of coalition building, we're going to fight amongst ourselves. Globalists fight each other too. People don't see it, but they do. Nationalists fight each other a lot all the time. Um, even there's even there's points I've been on streams where people have said, I like I said, uh, syndicalists have said I'm pro feudalism, and then I, I actually was talking to Jeremy. I'm like, let me figure out how I can talk to them or not. Some people think primitivists are all you know crazy people who want genocide. I don't think they do. I think they're looking at a more primitive way of living. I've talked to John Zerzan about this. That's why I said, Eli, when you were in the chat, I was kind of interested. You said you didn't know if coalition building was possible. Um, now, here's the thing. We're going to have disagreements. Well, I, could, on, on I can certainly elaborate on that later, but carry but on. Yeah. But yeah, that, it, it is possible, even if we have harsh disagreements, to actually socially cooperate not everybody who socially cooperates or even coalish is at the end of the day um c4ss is probably not going to agree with me on certain things um you and i don't i mean everybody here we don't agree on certain things like i would disagree with eli on minarchism i want complete decentralization and we have argued like fucking so much so yeah um and, and yeah me and uh i went three hours arguing with um, <laughs> yeah, um, Jeremiah because I still believe, and actually I agree with Leighton um, still partially that if you have competing groups like mafia groups, that is anarchist. And part of me still do, part of me still lends itself to say Somalia was anarchist. It's not. Um, or it was closer, I guess, if we're on a spectrum. And I do believe in easy case anarchy. Like if you review something on Yelp, you're making a decentralized decision. That being said, to kind of talk about coalition building and to talk about there will be conflict. I'm sure NCAPs and NCOMs will be shout out to Rise of Liberty crossing each other. But here's the thing. I still think at the end of the day, it'd be better to work with NCOMs because unlike state capitalism, which is what a lot of these things are, they're not going to go around and kill millions of people, which if you want to bring up the ye comment, uh, Leighton, uh, since we're, we're doing cultural things, that's what I was going to say, talk about, because that was an interesting, uh, I heard what <laughs> Alex Jones and that was wild too, but to stick with coalition building, it's possible if we can socially cooperate, not necessarily for nice. Sorry, that and if we can admit the problems, because I'll tell you, I've been on panels before. And uh, one of the panels that I was on was uh, was a <laughs> show called Break the Rules. And it did basically anything but, because as soon as I started to uh, go against the funding sources of libertarian organizations, they balked. People always balk. They're not willing to talk about the fact that this money has a direct influence and certainly not willing to talk about, like, open secrets findings or any of the things that have been proven, which is that the vast majority of candidates who win, win after getting the most funding to their advertising campaigns, etc. Um, and they're not willing to talk about that because they're not willing to, you know, address that part of the funding. Spike Cohen literally, uh, you know, got all pompous with me because I had the audacity to bring up the Coke funding. And I, all I did was ask him, if it's still a problem, and he got immediately defensive and didn't even address the question because that's well, what mean, happened when it, people but... when when people aren't willing to talk about whether or not coke funding even exists, much less is a problem. Um, that's a problem in alleged libertarian circles. Okay. Well. Uh, okay. Yeah. I think there's funding from just about every outside political organization. Okay, where's the, the FTX funding for the Libertarian Party? What, what, what FTX was a 
was a holding it's Democrats and Republicans. Yeah, I, I'm referring to I'm referring to the fact that you have a duopoly that exists outside of the LP, right? Those people are influencing the LP through funding both ways. Like that's okay, happening from all angles. Like I don't. Okay, so which Democrat is uh, donating to the LP? Well, I have no fucking idea. I can't tell you individual Republicans who don't. I have have a joke. There's none. And I'm sure there are certainly individual candidates in local areas, especially exclusively conservative and Republicans who are donating to LP and libertarian organizations because they're all. So let me ask you what. Let me ask you what does that mean to you? What it means to me is that libertarianism has been like since the seventies co-opted by conservative and made the same fucking point in New Libertarian Manifesto. Rothbard eventually okay, agreed with him after mean? he was kicked out of the Cato Institute. It means You're... that that's it, it means that that's what these people control. They control the message because they control the purse strings. And if they control the message and the so purse strings, they control the fucking policy. Do you disagree with the yes, message? Do you disagree, disagree with the policy? With Where? Say it. Gun. If you would stop fucking interrupting me, I fucking might. Okay, chill out. So, let's get fucking granular. Limited government. Fuck limited government. Either we're trending to zero or it's not liberty. Fuck personally liberal and socially liberal but economically conservative. That's a bastardization of what the terms liberal and conservative mean. And ultimately... When you with these people in charge, uh, they will always say that, oh, I'm classically liberal because they don't want dad to think of them as a liberal. But it's all liberalism. That's what liberalism means. That's what liberalism has always meant. The fact that they're saying classical is trying to seem more Republican. Um, the only decriminalize weed. Uh, let's decriminalize weed because that gets me high and because it's safe and, like, you know, we can bring it up to soccer moms about, like, analgesia no, and see, cancer. But, like, but we won't talk about meth. We won't talk about most hallucinations. This is a complete straw we man, won't... I mean, entirely. No, it's Never mind. fucking not! You asked me There's about the... specific policies, right. and now when I'm listing them, you won't let me finish. Yeah, those policies aren't the views of the people you're describing. That's a straw yes, man they by are. definition. I've been able for a long time. That's exactly what they say. This was on the material funded for Young Americans for Liberty. I handed out the palm cards. It doesn't... That one group with... It, you're making a complete adaptation, adaptation of every belief within a group because of one group. No, we're I'm doing exactly what every other political faction does. That's not coalition I'm building. About these that's the opposite. Organizations. And okay. I'm telling I, you that if I'm not interested in screaming on my show. Do... I'm not interested in doing that. Okay. I'm not interested in having somebody yell and scream on my show. If we want to have a discussion, we can have a discussion. That's not a debate. If I told you that they were donating their actions to... matter. Okay, in reality what you're saying means nothing. No, uh, here, it, I'll take a middle ground between both of you and say funding matters, actions do matter, but funding can, like, okay, I'll give you an example. Deep state funding non- can influence decisions, yes. but it doesn't Not have to. Problem. And unless it's, you can does, show me visibly where did. that is affecting it. Can I try something? Which is what I asked. Yes. So, so Kareem gets interrupted and he can't, like, finish what he was saying, right? So... Right, but it does that through actions that those politicians or those <laughs> candidates or those people take, not Woo! through the, not through the donation. Like well, I don't, I don't get what we're. You're much more well, interesting because they're all. So let affiliated. me ask you what. Let me ask you what does that mean to you? My, what it means to me is that libertarianism has been like since the seventies co-opted by conservative and made the same fucking point in New Libertarian Manifesto. Rothbard eventually okay, agreed with him after mean? he was kicked out of the Cato Institute. It means that that's it, it means that that's what these people control. They control the message because they control the purse strings. And if they control the message and the so purse strings, they control the fucking policy! Do you disagree with the yes, message? Do you disagree, disagree with the policy? With Where? Say it! Gun- it doesn't that one group with it, you're making a complete adaptation adaptation of every belief within a group because of one group. I'm not interested in having somebody yell and scream on my show.